Range fans, range fans. I got an exciting one today. Yes, sir. It is Sporting Rifle Day, all except for this one, of course. What you see on the bench here in front of you is a PWS Summit. This thing is pretty unique. It is a Vokorkson. It's in a specialized Vokorkson chassis, really made for standing and shooting, not made for bench rest. But it's almost like a 1022 bolt action with this straight pull action here on the side. We've got some Lapua long range that we're going to put through this thing. But most of all, Gem Tech Integral Suppressor. Yeah, Mr. X-Ring, I saw your Integral Suppressor video. And guess what? I called up a friend of mine and say, time to break it out. We want to show Ray a thing or two. He had some great accurate barrels. What we're going to do is go sporting rifles from 1950s all the way up to the late 2000s. So hang in there. You're going to want to see some of these beautiful, beautiful pieces. A couple you've never seen on the channel before. And this happens to be one of them. We got the video rolling down range. I got no magazine in, you knucklehead. All right. Five, five shot groups. Woo. Got old shorty TS3 to 12 US optics on it. Oh, shot high, real high. By the way, we're going to go home and measure the groups, each of these five-shot groups, and see which one turns in the best groups, which might be the best shooter. What do you think? Now, I know, I know, I know. I am supposed to lock test each of these, but I figure, like, it's fair game. 1950s to the late 2000s, sporting rifles, and something unique here at the end, or at the beginning. End, beginning, yeah, whatever. <laughs> Let's put five more rounds on that next target. I tell you what, I love the way this thing is shooting. PWS Summit. Now, it's in a Vokorkson chassis, but what makes this unique, Vokorkson bought the setup from PWS. This is one of the early models, not a Vokorkson model. This is a really early model from, what, the late 2010-ish or so. Shooting with these peepers suck.
Oh, yeah. Those are one and a half inch targets. Those orange targets you see down range and the uh, target camera view, one and a half inches. We got two more five shot groups. Let's see. Let's lower this thing a little bit so I'm not muscling. I want to be fair to each rifle. Which generation would you choose that you would say is the most accurate? 50s, 70s, 80s, 2000s. Which is it? Oh, she's a shooter. Yes, sir. I will take that. Oh, yeah. Last five rounds. PWS Summit. 22 long rifle. It's got the extended mag release on it. It's in this beautiful aluminum for corks and chassis. This thing will even hold magazines back here in the rear. Just plop them in back here like this. <laughs> Get them off the bench, get them out of your way, but in the chassis. So every time you go to the range, you've got them. You don't have to look through your range bag like I do. Oh, I love it. I love it. Hey, if you want to know about integral suppression, um, Ray over at the X-Ring, he just recently did a video on integral suppressors, kind of talking about how they cut it down and put the suppressor on the end, how it affects accuracy or not. I tell you what, this is a really nice setup. And I want to thank my buddy DM for loaning it to me for today so I can come to you all now. It's time to jump back to the 1950s. You want to take a guess of what's coming up next? No, I ain't going to tell you. You'll have to wait and see. Oh, moving on to some of my favorites. Yes, what a blast to shoot that PWS Summit. But now we're going to some true bolt actions. 1968 BRNO Model 5 or Berno Model 5 with a Tasco 24 power Thanks, Jim. Appreciate it, bud. Tasco, 24 power sitting on top. Donation to the channel. A little unfair because the rest you're going to see today truly has rimfire scopes on top of them, 3 to 9. The last one had a 3 to 12 on it. But beautiful wood, 1968. Let's do some shooting. That's what y'all came here for. Let's do some shooting. Little bit unfair, though. 24 power. No ciders and a little windy, you can tell from the background noise today. And five, ooh, 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 1968. So what would you like to have? Yeah, it's a little unfair. I know almost every rimfire shooter that uh, I have met 
want an intricately suppressed, and you can thank Ray over at the X Ring for that. He really won, got my uh, chops flowing on that intricately suppressed rifle. Maybe it's time for me to get one, or maybe a Mark III or something intricately suppressed. You never know. Thanks, Ray, for uh, helping me spend my cash, which I have very little of anyways. Burno. That's what I'm talking about. Hey, by the way, I forgot to tell you, I deep cleaned these things and I had to call my buddy DM. I said, hey man, I want to deep clean some of your rifles. What deep cleaning means to me is taking a patch, a wet patch, down through the bore and kicking it out at the end, right? Taking that wet patch down through the bore, letting it sit for five minutes. Yes, I did that for each one of these rifles except for the summit, so a little bit unfair. Letting it sit for about five minutes. And then I took a bronze brush, not a bronze brush, a nylon brush, wrapped a 22 patch around it, wet it, and went through the bore, from chamber to bore, 20 times. For each rifle, let it sit, and then ran five dry patches through it. So, I'm kind of seasoning the barrels back, uh, and Lapua, Super long range. But every rifle was done that way. Oh, tickle pink. Okay, this thing, again, 1958, really shooting this well, looking this good. I will say the stock has been refinished. If you go back and look at one of the previous videos, you'll see that the stock has been refinished on this thing, but the metal is in absolutely great condition. The bore is in absolutely great condition and original. All right. Oh, what happened there? Some reason that group fell apart on me. We're gonna go to the last five rounds. Come on, Berno. Was that win? Last one. Don't matter. We're shooting them all in the same conditions. You can go over to dayattherange.com and see the sizing of the groups. I will get home and measure these things with on-target software to get as accurate as I absolutely can. 
and put the size of the groups over there, maybe a couple of pictures of each rifle to let you guys have a humble look at them. All right, let's move it up a tad notch. Ho, ho, we got a Savage Anschutz. Yeah, folks, a Savage Anschutz. It's actually an Anschutz 54 Sporter that was imported by Savage, and according to the markings on the barrel, it's from 1972. So we're moving it up a tad notch. We've got Lapua, uh, super long range on the bench with us. I got three magazines here. Oh boy, only three, so I'm gonna have to reload, folks. Sorry about that. But with Weaver, vintage, vintage scope, Weaver K12 sitting on top. I don't know how this is gonna do. We'll see. Oh, I hate these peepers. Uh, shooting a hair left for me. But we're shooting for groups today. And the old ant shoot showed up. We're shooting for groups. Which one will turn in the best group, folks? What do you think? Which one is going to turn in the best groups? From 1968 up through the early 2000s. O'Ray inspired over at X-Ring, he inspired that integral suppressor in the opening. But old Wood Nibs over at, what is it, Walnut and Steel, I think his channel is. Nibs, forgive me, my friend, if I got that wrong. Uh, he inspired this sporting rifle, older vintage, generational-like video. I, there's just something about them, folks. Something about them. This quality, you tell me down in the comments below, do they still make them this way? Do they still make them this way? By the way, we got one coming up that you all haven't seen before on this channel. Oh, Nibs, what you think, buddy? Hey, by the way, these old Anschutz magazines, they are pretty expensive. That's the one thing. When they start to get a little older, everything starts to get to be like a collectible. But I got a little trick for you. If you search hard enough, there's actually someone on eBay, Fleabay, that uh, sells modified Savage uh, magazines, Savage Mark II magazines and turns them into Anschutz magazines. That's what both of these are. Now, I modified these because I just wanted to do it myself. Uh, I modified these, not hard. It takes you takes a file and about two to three minutes, and you're ready to rock and roll. Let's see how this magazine performs. All right, dead center target. Uh-oh, I start bragging and shot way wide.
are you kidding me? No, I'm done, folks. After that group, oh, no, no, we, we got to finish the mission. Never have been late on a mission, always finish the mission. Oh, boy. Whew. All right, big fella, hold on. Calm down. Get your heart rate down. Let's get this rifle set up. Bottom left. Oh, got me fired up. This old Anschutz. Folks, 1972. Walnut and steel. Wood and steel, baby. Catch yourself drooling. <laughs> oh, boy. This Weaver K-12, fine crosshairs. <laughs> Make me want to get up and do the G. <laughs> oh my goodness. The last five out of the Savage, modified Savage magazine. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Here we go, folks. Are you kidding me? This thing might shoot with Wookie. Oh, and for those of you that haven't seen, see that previous video, I got Wookie back. He's in a bench gun set up this time. Got Wookie back. But folks, Savage and Shoots from 1972. Weaver K-12 sitting on top. Beautiful bluing. Beautiful wood with a few scratches in it. But boy, what a shooter. It is. Let's keep going up. Let's keep. Hey, are we going up in quality as we go up in years or what? You tell me. Oh, we got something special coming up next. Something super. Something super. <laughs> super America coming up next. I told you. I told you we had something super. The Kimber Model 82 Sporter. Super America. It's got a true Leopold three to nine on top of this thing. Like I said, most of these sporters have a three to nine. They were really made for hunting scenarios. That's the way they were outfitted. Some of these have been sitting in the back of the safe for quite some time. Uh, have not been shot. By the way, on this range, I've always said 50 yards, but my buddy DM, like a brother to me, he has a, a range finder. And on that range finder, it's 53 yards. So come on, come on, give me, give me some slack. It's at least 53 yards. <laughs> like three yards make that much of a difference. But we got the Kimber Super America. This thing's got beautiful wood on it. Just oh, fantastic. And by the date, folks, we've now moved up to 1986. Unfortunately, I'm gonna. Uh, we only brought one magazine. Really, kind of wasn't thinking. Uh, it does have the flip up sights on it. Hey, look. You've seen this one before on the channel. I've got a video on it where I give a detailed review of it, a little bit of history review, and written over at dayattherange.com, so that's why I'm not going into much of it here. But absolutely beautiful rifle, and we're going to shoot it. Unfortunately, we only brought one magazine, so I'm going to cut the video to reload the magazine each time. Here we go. Ooh, hoo, hoo, hoo. Why? 
does that look so far away? All right, here we go. Don't fail me, Loopy. Nice wide trigger. Oh, shot right. Last one, the bolt's pretty sticky with these Lapua super long range. Oh, we might give and shoots a go. Hey folks, hang in there. Let me reload this thing. Oh, if I can remember how to eject it. Can I reload it quick enough to not let the barrel cool down too much? Second target to the right. Oh, that bolt is really sticky. Close is fine. That win. Oh, this Camber Super America. Uh-oh. I thought for sure that old Anschutz wasn't going to be beat after I shot those groups with it. But this thing, oh boy. By the way, as I said earlier in the video, they all have been deep cleaned exactly the same way. Nylon brush with a 22 patch wrapped around it. Through the board 20 times and five dry patches. Dead center. This thing is so comfortable to sit behind, too. me oh my old dm i tell you what man boy whoo what a rifle he will be tickled pink when he sees these groups i know what's gonna happen he's gonna want to go out and get some of this lapo super long range and honestly i think lapo will put some out in the market to see how well it would sell because i haven't seen any in about eight months now first release yes bunch of it on the market i got a brick of it unfortunately just one brick I can't find any more of it. What a beautiful rifle and a great shooting rifle. Bottom left. Three to nine scope.
What a squirrel getter it is. Oh my goodness. Absolutely amazed. <laughs> now, it's almost unfair to ask you, but you've seen the rifle so far. We had the new age, Vukorkson, intricately suppressed. Then we went over to the BRNO Burno Model 5. Then we went over to the 1972 Savage and Shoes. And this one, we got something else coming up. <laughs> 1986 Kimber, Model 82, Super America Sporter, True Hunter. Oh, those are going to be some groups to measure up next to the Anschutz 1986 edition. 1986 era, true squirrel getter, three to nine. I don't know that I would ever take this thing out in the woods, quite frankly, because I'd be scared to bruise it up. It is just a beautiful rifle. Kimber, Model 82, Super America. Something you've never seen on this channel before. Coming up next. Oh, I noticed what y'all been waiting for. Have you ever seen one of these? I will tell you, until not long ago, I never saw one. My buddy DM, fantastic guy, at least to me, um, had this thing sitting in the back of the safe. I said, man, we got to get it out and shoot this thing. And I thought, what better than in this video to break out the Browning A-Bolt, the A-Bolt version from 1988. We're going to do the same test. Five five-shot groups with Lapua, super long range. Whoo, what a beauty this is. Look at the wood on this thing. Hey, we'll have, this is about shooting. This is about shooting. It's about, is the old still as good as the new? Or is the new as good as the old. You tell me what you think more about shooting. I only brought one magazine again for this thing. Um, but next time, we'll get it out and do a detailed review, barrel length, and show you some close-ups. It's got a three to nine Nikon EFR. It actually has a period correct scope, which is a four power. And I just thought it was not fair to put four power against all the other scopes we were gonna feature in this video. So I put a three to nine Nikon EFR on top. Uh, also, this thing shocked me. The bolt is very smooth, but when I took it out to deep clean it, this is the largest 22 rim fire bolt I've ever seen. Look at it compared to this Kimber Super America. Wow, just amazed at how beefy it is, but 19, 88, let's get to shooting. All right, here we go. That wide gold trigger, gold plated trigger.
get the old brown in to settle down. I know it. I know she'll group a little bit better than that. Oh, that's right. The magazine release is on the front of the steel, by the way. Yes, steel trigger guard. The magazine release is a little push button. I mean, they really went like all out on this browning. Beautiful, shoots well. And the, uh, the, even the bolt release on the side, man, it's just beefy. Everything screams heft, well-made, American-made, Morgan, Utah. Made in Japan, shall I say, but imported through Morgan, Utah for the Browning Arms Company. Oh, come on, Browning. Now, that's what I expected. Oh, starting to look like the old Anschutz and that Kimber Super America. Oh, that's what I expected. Let's open up another box. I did check to make sure that these, all these boxes, of course, is from the same lot. Can I get the box open is the question. Oh, this is a pain in the butt. I hate ripping the boxes. I usually just stick a knife in there. Oh, and I ripped it anyways. Well, that just means we got to shoot up this box, doesn't it? Going to load up five more. So what do you all think from what you've seen so far? We've had the Volkorksen. Oh, PWS Summit. It's a hybrid because that's an original PWS Summit before Volkorksen bought it with intricately suppressed Gemtech barrel on it. And then we went to the Berno Model 5. Then we went to the Anschutz 1972. Then we came to the Super America 1986-1988. Browning, A-Bolt, dead center. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Got a little bit of a jam there. Nope. Not been up in any way. So we're going to put it back in there and let her rip tater chip. That comes from me not cycling the boat. I noticed one last thing. The last little bit of cycle on this boat, it's like spring-loaded almost to get it all the way back. Pretty unique, at least to me. Hey, hey, take your bets. Down below, tell me what you think. You've seen the Anschutz. You've seen the Berno. You've seen the Kimber Super America. Which one is the best shooter so far, tightest group? Which one would you guess has the best trigger? I'm not going to tell you until the end. Uh, and you will have to go over to dayattherange.com to see the measurements of the groups as well. Which one is the best looking? I've showed you a little bit of a close-up of all of them.
Oh my goodness. Hey, I was just thinking about something. You guys tell me, hang in there with me now. We're just about done. You guys tell me why today does everyone want the big thick barrels? Um, supposedly the sporter barrels don't shoot as well. What's different today with the big thick barrels than from the sporter barrels? Look, it's, it's a thin sporter barrel made for hunting, kind of has the weight of a hunter, but it's shooting like a bench rest rifle. Where has the quality gone? Oh boy. <laughs> That's a sincere question, by the way. Oh, that was five. Oh, I just got so fired up in shooting this thing. It is such a pleasure to shoot. And you know what? I almost forgot how clear Nikon Pro Staff EFRs really were. I mean, just absolutely clear. Gold trigger. You think this one has the best trigger or what? Comment down below. Tell me which one you like to have in your safe. Which one was the best looking? Which one? turned into the best groups and which one has the best trigger you actually might be surprised on that one i know it's kind of hard to tell but there you have it we have gone through 1968 gone to 1972 gone to 1986 gone to 1988 we started it out in what that pws summit 2018 or so that's where we started. Oh, fellas. <laughs> what a beautiful day on the range it has been. And I hope that you have appreciated the video. Tell me in the likes. Tell me in the comments down below. Thank you for coming along with me. Mr. Revolver Guy, I'm going home. So, folks, I need the historians to tell me a little bit about the Savage Anschutz Model 54 Sporter. The model that you've seen on the bench earlier today during this video was mine, was dated in 1972. How I could tell, it had 72 here embossed. But as you can see, this is a totally different sporter and the letters are HK. Someone put in the comments down below, what does that mean? What date is it? Mr. Revolver Guy, Appreciate all y'all's help going home.